Hi everyone, welcome to another crochet tutorial with me Laura and in this video it's going to be a Tunisian crochet stitch today and this is the honeycomb stitch. Okay, so you can use any yarn that you like for this project. I'm just going to choose a different one from the blue, more of a mustard yellow colour and you can use any hook size that's suitable for the yarn that you're using. Um, you are going to need a Tunisian and crochet hook though, so that's a long hook, a long straight one or um, the other type, just anything that can hold a lot of loops. So let's begin, shall we? So the first thing to do is a slip knot, as per usual. It's a normal slip knot. And you can chain as many chains as you like, so you don't have to work to any specific units of anything. So I'm just gonna chain a few chains, just for this sample. Two, three, four, nine and ten so I'm just going to chain ten just for this sample and then what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with some very normal Tunisian crochet so if you're a beginner with Tunisian crochet you've never done it before um, then I do recommend checking out my uh, beginner Tunisian tutorials and then coming back to this just in case it's a little bit too fast but what we're going to do is we're going to work into our second chain from our hooks we don't count the loop on a hook there's our first there's our second I'm going to go into there going to grab the yarn and bring up a loop and we're just going to leave it on our hook. I'm going to do that all the way across. Let's go into the next chain, grab the yarn, keep it on our hook. Next chain, grab the yarn and just repeat that all the way across. So what you should end up with is the same amount of loops that you ch uh, that you chained in the beginning. So I chained 10, so I should have 10 loops on my hook. Then what we're going to do is a reverse row and the very first thing we need to do with every single reverse row is a chain one. So we yarn over and come through that first loop only and that keeps a straight edge. But then we yarn over and pull through two loops until we get to the end. So yarn over, pull through two through two all the way back to the beginning okay so it's normal Tunisian crochet so far nothing unique to the honeycomb stitch so the next time we are now going to work the honeycomb stitch and you should end up with um, a kind of a ladder of stitches, these little vertical bars as I like to call them. And we're going to work under those. So we're going to ignore the first vertical bar because we already have a loop on our hook. So it's like the stitch has already been worked. Then we're going to go under the next vertical bar here. We're just going to go from one side to the other, just underneath it like that. I'm going to grab the yarn from the top and bring that underneath and then just keep that on our hook. And that's a simple stitch, okay? Now we need to do a purl stitch, and to do a purl stitch, all we need to do is bring our yarn down in front of our next vertical bar. So find where your next vertical bar is, this one here. I'm going to bring the yarn down in front of it. Then we're going to go onto the vertical bar, out through the other side, keeping everything to the front. And we're going to bring this yarn underneath that vertical bar, and then we're going to yarn over. And I like to hold it with my thumb to keep it out of the way, make it easy to bring underneath the vertical bar. Keep that on your hook and I like to give it a little pull as well just to loosen, uh, tighten, not loosen, tighten any excess loop. Okay then we bring our yarn back up to the top, find the next vertical bar and do a normal simple stitch. So just bring that underneath from the top. Then we do a purl stitch again so I'm going to bring the yarn down, go on to the next vertical bar, wrap it underneath and then yarn over and bring it underneath a little pull to neaten. Bring the yarn back to the top, go onto the next vertical bar, grab the yarn from the top and do a simple stitch. Back to purl, bring it down to the next vertical bar and just repeat that all the way across, alternating between the simple stitch and the purl stitch where we bring the yarn down. And so you get to the end. Now you might end on a simple stitch or you might end on a purl stitch. It does not matter. This one I happen to be ending on a simple stitch. But just check your stitch count is the same and you still got however many you started with. 
Then we do a reverse row, which is exactly the same. We always do that chain one first, pull through one loop only, then we pull through two, back to the beginning. So your reverse rows are always the same. They never change. Okay. And this time for our next row, we are going to alternate. So this time, instead of doing a simple stitch first, we're going to go straight into a purl stitch. Now again, we're going to ignore our, so we've got a new row of vertical bars now, you see here, and some are smaller than others. The bigger ones are where your simple stitches were, and these smaller ones were where your purl stitches were. And you can tell that because you've got that horizontal bar underneath. So we're going to skip the first vertical bar because we've already got the loop on our hook and look for the next one. The next one's here and it's quite big so we know that's a simple stitch. So I need to do the opposite which is a purl stitch. So I'm going to bring my yarn down before I go underneath that vertical bar. Then I'm going to grab the yarn from underneath, give it a little pull. Bring the yarn up, the yarn up and then we can see we did a purl stitch last time so this time I just want to do a simple stitch. And it can be quite small, that vertical bar, but it's sat right above that horizontal bar. Again, grab the yarn from the top and do a simple stitch. And then alternate all the way across, doing the opposite of whatever you did last time. So a purl stitch on a simple stitch, and then a simple stitch on a purl stitch. Okay. Just repeat that all the way across. And this was voted for on my Instagram account, if you want to go check out my Instagram account at Happy Berry Crochet, where you can vote for pattern tutorials and what you would like to see on my YouTube channel. So it's always worth following me over there if you haven't already. Lots of extra treats over there. Okay, so this time I'm going to be ending on a purl stitch because my last vertical bar is a simple stitch and if you struggle to see where your last stitch is just prop your hook on top keep it straight and you should see where that last one is so I need to bring the yarn down to do a purl stitch go on to the last vertical bar and grab the yarn okay and there we go and then we do a reverse row like we did before so we do a chain one then pull through two until you get to the end it's always the same Okay, you can start seeing it come together, the little honeycomb shapes. And the next row, we go back to doing what we did before, so we change it again. So ignore the first vertical bar and look for that second one. We can see it was a purl stitch, so we go straight in and do a simple stitch. So you do the opposite. And then this one's quite big, so we know that was a simple stitch. We do a purl stitch from the bottom. Then back up to a simple stitch. So keep alternating, doing the opposite of whatever you did last time. And just keep repeating that over and over again until you end up with the honeycomb stitch. And it's as easy as that, she says. <laughs> Hopefully you'll give it a try. Like I said, if you're new to knitting crochet, do check out my beginner tutorials, especially the simple stitch and the purl stitch. And then coming back and giving this a try. So this time I need to finish up on a simple stitch. It can be a little bit harder to see this one because it's a purl stitch. But again, just flatten it up and look for that horizontal bar there. You see that little horizontal bar? We know the vertical bar is just above it there. So I can grab and do a simple stitch. And there we go. And then I just do a reverse row again. Chain one, then pull through two. And there we go, I shall stop there for this little swatch, but there you can see the pattern come together and it's exactly the same here, creating the honeycomb stitch. You're just alternating between the simple stitch and the purl stitch.
there we go. But uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Don't for click, uh, don't forget to hit that notification button so you get notified of all my tutorials when they become available. And I will see you soon for some more crochet fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.